All right, everybody, and welcome to this practice exam for the A plus 1101 uh, exam objective 2.2. That is the one that we're doing today. In this practice exam, we're going to have a look at the following things. I'm going to ask you practice questions and give you detailed explanations on each of these. So don't stress if you're freaking out about your exam. It's all going to be perfectly fine. We're going to have a look at 2.2. Exam objective 2.2, compare and contrast common networking hardware. So that means we're going to look at what do each of these do, what are the differences between them, uh, and what are the individual details we need to know about each one. We're going to look at routers, switches, what's a managed switch, what's an unmanaged switch, unmanaged switch, what a mouthful, what is an access point, what is a patch panel, what is a firewall, power over ethernet, what the heck is that, what's a hub. Additionally, we're going to then look at the kind of hardware and internet connection methodologies or methods and the individual things involved in connecting to the internet, such as a cable modem, a digital subscriber line or DSL, optical network terminal, network interface card, and software-defined networking. We're going to look at all of that. Let's get straight into it with our first practice question, which is, you feel accomplished after successfully disabling ports 80 and 443 in order to prevent all internet browsing. Which of the following did you most likely use to do this? A, a hub, B, a firewall, C, a managed switch, or D, a router? And the answer is B, a firewall. So guys, essentially a firewall is what you use to disable or enable any specific ports or protocols that you want to enable or disable. Maybe someone has been consistently entering the company credit card details over plain text over HTTP on port 80 and you want to say, guys, you got to stop using the company credit card to fund your anime addiction and if you're going to do it at least do it securely only use port 443 for https which is of course secure internet browsing as we've already covered in the last practice exam so in order to do that you'd use a firewall and you'd say hey look i'm only going to allow you guys to use port 443 and i'm only going to allow you guys to use the protocol uh, https so even if you try even if you're so silly that you keep doing it it's just not going to work use a firewall to do that some of the other options there. Another one was a hub. So on this slide here, if you're looking at the slides, I've got these guys screaming. And that's pretty much because that's exactly what a hub is like. With a hub, you might have five devices connected. Device one wants to communicate to device two. But the hub broadcasts that information to every device connected. Even if it wasn't intended for them, even if they don't want to hear it, they're going to get it. So you can imagine how this would create consistent lots of consistent network traffic that could seriously slow you down and it's like you got these guys screaming at you and it's just not a good thing to have so a hub broadcast that to every device connected we also had a managed switch so we should know what a switch is right a switch uh, you connect your devices to it it learns the mac address of each device and if device a wants to send a message to device b only device b will get that unlike a hub that we just spoke about it only goes to the to the necessary device that that the intended recipient now on top of that you've got switches that are managed and unmanaged a managed switch essentially it's a switch that you can manage it's a switch that allows you to log in and configure it and set up as many different kind of customization things as you would like to a certain extent obviously a managed switch doesn't have any real customization capabilities so if you want to set up um, segmentation you need a managed switch so if you want to do any kind of customization, managed switch is going to be where it's at. If you just want to plug things in and forget about it and not do anything, then you're going to want an unmanaged switch, right? So that's what that is. And of course, if you do want to read the more lengthy information, you pause the video, have a look at the slide, it's there. But I'm not going to read off the slides for you because no one likes someone who just reads off the slides. And of course, we also had a router. A router's job is kind of in the name. If you want to send information out of your local area network off to another local area network somewhere it first goes to the router the router looks at the route that it has to go on figures out what the best route it should it should use in order to get it there efficiently and effectively and then it sends it on that route so it routes the data from wherever it's coming from to the next stop all right the router routes that's the best way i can think of explaining it and i'm not going to go super in depth into that because if you're doing this practice quiz this shouldn't be your first point of study 
Your first point of study should, of course, be my learning guide at journeydecyber.com. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, hopefully, if you're doing this completely for free, you should be looking at Professor Messer and get a grasp of everything. And then once you've done that, come here and do these free practice exams broken down by exam objectives. So this shouldn't be your first point of call, which is why some of this I only go over as like a reminder of things you should have already gone over, right? So the next question is, Thomas sends data from his LAN to another LAN by first routing the data through a WAN. In this scenario, what device is responsible for forwarding the data from the initial LAN to the destination LAN? Is it A, a patch panel, B, a hub, C, a router, or D, an AP? And the answer is C, a router. Now, guys, of course, we just talked about it, right? A router routes. If you're, if you're moving data from a LAN to another LAN, a router is going to be what sends the data on its route. It routes the route. It sends the data on the route. We should kind of, we should get a, we should have a, a pretty good grasp of that, right? So there's that again, but we, we already knew that, right? Of course we did. Now, uh, another option there was a patch panel. So a patch panel is essentially you've got... Um, how do I describe it? You've got in a big office, a lot of wires coming from the kind of office side of the computers over here. A lot of computers all want to plug into the switch. They have to go plug directly into the switch. If you want to move one of these computers, it's going to be a pain in the butt to try to rewire that, right? So a patch panel, what it allows you to do is you can essentially plug each computer into the patch panel and you've got the kind of like almost office facing side of it. And then the port on that office facing side will map to another port on the other side where an additional cable is plugged in and that then plugs into the switch. So if you want to move any of these computers over here, all you have to do is simply, you know, plug it in again, leave it, move it to wherever you're, you're going. Maybe you want to swap desk with someone, you plug in the lead that's already there and then you just change the mapping of those ports for the patch panel you say, hey, look, this guy actually moved. This port is over here now. This port now maps to this one. And that stops you from having to completely rewire it every time you want to do that, right? Completely reset it up. You don't have to do that. So patch panel, it's essentially uh, just wire cable organization. Makes it really sleek, makes it really effortless. You can move around if you want to without having to do a whole lot of effort in terms of reorganizing everything. So as far as my description here goes, that's going to be it for patch panel. Another ex uh, option there was, of course, the access point. Now, really short and simple, access points allow you to get wireless access to an otherwise wired network, or they also extend the reach of a wireless network, okay? Now, in your personal home, your router is also an access point because your home's not that big. It doesn't really need access points unless you live in a mansion, in which case, you know, great for you. But these are usually going to be seen in offices or really kind of big floor space areas where there's a lot of space to cover. So that is an access point, guys. Next question, let's do it. Matt has just ordered multiple security cameras for his office, but after he made the order, he realized that they do not have a power input. Instead, they only have a port for ethernet connection. How can Matt ensure the new cameras can receive power despite having no clear option for power input? A manually install a power input b he cannot he should request a refund and complain c he can provide power through the ethernet cable or d the cameras do not need power i'm not gonna lie guys this question was probably a bit too easy the option is c he can provide power through the ethernet cable. Now, when it comes to providing ethernet, sorry, providing power over ethernet, or yeah, power over ethernet, you've got two options. You can have a switch that can provide the power itself, in which case you just plug it in, power is provided, great, good for you, you're good to go. But some switches don't have that capability, they don't have power over ethernet capability, so what you have to do is buy what you see here, which is an injector where you kind of plug it in in the middle, it injects the power for you if your switch isn't capable of doing that, 
and then you plug that cord into whatever device you're trying to power up. So an injector injects power into the Ethernet cable if your switch can't do it, right? So keep that in mind. You'll definitely need to know that for the exam, 100%. There's going to be some questions in there about that. So you live in a densely populated urban area and require an internet connection. Your apartment has both telephone and television cables. Which method of internet connectivity should you use if you require a symmetric upload and download speed and want to use the aforementioned cables? A, fiber, B, DSL, C, cable, or D, satellite? And the answer is C, cable. Now guys, this was kind of a tricky question and we, we had to use the process of elimination here. So we were told we had telephone lines and television lines or cables, and we were told we wanted to use those cables. So that immediately eliminates satellite and fiber because there was no mention of satellite. There was no mention of anything relating to fiber either. DSL uses telephone cables and cable uses television cable. So we know it's going to be DSL or cable. The next part of the question talked about symmetric uh, speeds, right? DSL provides, generally speaking, in relation to your exam, provides you with asymmetric speeds, meaning the download speeds are faster than the upload speeds, okay? So you're going to want to keep that in mind for your exam. That's how we got to DSL. DSL uses telephone cables, it's asymmetric speeds. Cable uses television cables and has relatively symmetric speeds, at least in terms for your exam. If you get asked a question like that, DSL is one with asymmetric speeds on average. Okay, so keep that in mind. Some other questions you might be asked about all of this is, based on the scenario, which networking equipment should you use? So do you wanna use a switch, a router? Do you wanna use a firewall? What do you wanna use based on what you have to do, based on the scenario? Uh, what network equipment is being described in a given scenario? Or they might describe a function and ask you what net piece of networking equipment does that function. What does the described networking equipment do? They might say, hey, what does a switch do? What does a router do? You know, they might ask you that question. And again, when it comes to the different types of internet connection, based on the scenario, which method of internet connection is the most appropriate? Or maybe more specifically, which piece of networking hardware relating to connecting to the internet should you use? Should you use DSL modem, a cable modem? Uh, op uh, optical network terminal, which actually I don't think we covered that now that I think about it. Optical network terminal is essentially when you, oh, we did, it was in the slide, I just didn't talk about it. Sorry, guys. Optical network terminal, I'll head, head back real quick, uh, is, here we go, yeah, fiber would need an optical network terminal and satellite would need a satellite connection. So for fiber, you need an optical network terminal, which essentially translates the, the fiber into something that you can use in your personal premises to connect to the internet, okay? So if there's no ONT at your house, it's not gonna be fiber, generally speaking. So knowing what those hardware do in relation to connecting to the network will help you to answer those kinds of questions. And of course, you might also have uh, which method of internet connection is being described. So, hey, we're using telephone lines. What kind of internet connection are we using? Or what piece of hardware would we use to do this? Of course, that would be DSL, because DSL uses television, sorry, no, telephone lines. Okay, it's been a long day, guys. Sorry about that. I'm recording just after work and everything. So sometimes I trip over my own words. But if you have, oh, crap, there's another question. Here we go. Sorry. Question, last one. <laughs> Which of the following do you need to purchase in order to access the internet? A, O, N, T, B, N, I, C, C, cable modem, or D, unmanaged switch? And the answer is B, N, I, C. So guys, a Nick is a network interface card and essentially allows you to connect to the internet. If you don't have a NIC, you're not gonna be able to connect to the internet at all. You might be thinking, wait a second, Matt, there was cable modem mentioned there. Why, why isn't cable modem the answer? Because you might have a cable modem, but it's not necessary. You could have a DSL modem, you could be using fiber, you could be using satellite. There's other ways to connect to the internet, but you can't use any of them unless you have a NIC. A NIC is the only one that is mandatory there. So that's why that's the correct answer. Now guys, 
Finally, we have software defined networking here. A question for this, let's take a look. Jenny is writing an educational document designed to teach her students about the benefits of software defined networking. Which of the following planes should she say is responsible for acting as a frame of reference for the infrastructure layer? A, management plane, B, control plane, C, data plane, D, application layer. And the answer is B, the control plane. So guys, when it comes to software defined networking, this is something I got super confused on for my exam and I had to spend a lot of time on it. So if you get confused on something, don't avoid it. Make sure you spend time on it until you understand it. So software defined networking guys, we have three kind of layers here or three planes. You've got the application layer, which is the client kind of facing stuff. The client logs in, that's what they see. You get a promotion because the client loves the application. Great work, great application layer, right? You got this guy with his laptop looking all smick and happy because whatever you did to the program, he's loving what he's seeing, right? You also got the control layer. So that's managed by a controller usually. And that's the thing that kind of controls everything. It tells it how to work, tells it what to do, tells it uh, how it should run. And finally, you've got the infrastructure layer, which is the actual components that are doing the work, okay? So make sure you understand the different planes of uh, software-defined networking, different planes, different layers, different terminology there. You can call it plane or layer. They might use either terminology in the exam, okay? But know what the different s planes or layers of SDN or software-defined networking are for your exam. You're gonna need to know that for sure. You might also be asked, what is each plane responsible for? So what do they do? What job do they have? You might be asked based on the given scenario, what plane is being used? Which one is being described in that scenario? You might also be asked to outline the differences involved uh, in software defined networking. So, you know, what are the differences between the planes, between the, the layers, that kind of thing? How do they differ from one another? And just generally, what is it, right? And just to, to clarify, in case we're not sure, software defined networking, you're it's like net regular networking, but just with software. It's controlled by software, right? So in general, to understand that concept, you'll be sweet. But if you're kind of confused, make sure you look into it a bit more. That being said, guys, if you found value in this video, head over to journeytocyber.com and grab my very, very affordable learning guide, which breaks everything down, not only by exam objective, but by each dot point inside each of exam objective, right? So take a look at the detail there, right? In each one of these, each one of these little segments here, you have detailed and comprehensive notes, you have active recall questions, you've got scenario-based and simple questions with detailed explanations, and for the areas where I think you really need it, you've also got learning activities with some, uh, you know, activities that you can go through in order to learn the stuff really well. I've done that for the things I think you need to really focus on. You can also grab my five practice exams there, which have performance-based questions and detailed explanations as well. And if you want to get them both, you can get them for both for $50. That being said, guys, my plug is done. I will see you next time for Exam Objective 2.3 coming up next. See you there.